that all of us are created equal is the star that guides us still. Just as it guided our forebears through Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall, In June of 1969, the Stonewall Inn Raid initiated a violent encounter between the bar-goers, including gay men, lesbians, and drag queens, and the NYPD. These riots paved the way for the LGBTQ community to openly explore their sexual orientation and put their rights at the forefront of American politics. In ancient Greece, same-sex relationships were a normal part of life. Be that as it may, throughout Western civilization, homosexuality has been highly discouraged and often illegal. We went to Denver to interview drag performer and subject matter expert, Stuart Sanks. In the 50s and 60s, you know, being gay or dressing in drag was illegal in all 50 states. There were laws on the books that said if you were out in public, you had to be wearing at least three articles of clothing from your biological gender. So anybody who was in drag was breaking the law. Notably, even before the 17th century, men have been portraying females through costumes, makeup, and feminine characterization. Many historians believe the term drag originated in Shakespearean times when females were prohibited from acting in plays. So the acronym drag for dressed as girl was placed next to the names of men playing female roles. Drag has often been used as an outlet for homosexuals to explore their sexuality in a safe place. Although some LGBTQ communities existed, homosexuality, and particularly drag, was still condemned by mid-20th century society. In the United States, homosexuality was looked upon as a curable disease. One never knows when the homosexual is about. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. So keep with your group. Many homosexuals at the time were thrown in asylums and mental institutions where they would undergo horrible experimental treatments. This being the Cold War era, cultural conformity and unity was expected in the United States, and anything out of the ordinary was deemed un-American. Similar to the Red Scare, the Lavender Scare would identify homosexuals as communist sympathizers and look to remove them from state employment. Anti-gay public service announcements would attempt to make the words homosexual, communist, and molester interchangeable in the public's eye. Life as a gay person in the 1940s and the 1950s, even to the 1960s, there was no in or out of the closet. Everybody was in. There was no out. You know, you, you, weren't, um, you weren't free to do that. There was such societal pressures to um, act in a certain way, to behave in a certain way, to get married and have children, and this was the only option. The civil rights movement of the 1960s brought several important social issues to light. Among the fights for Chicano, student, African American, and women's rights came the fight for gay rights as well. As with most new trends, big cities such as New Orleans, San Francisco, and New York were ahead of the times. In the 1960s, Greenwich Village in Lower Manhattan became an epicenter of the homosexual community. With the influx of homosexuals to the area came an influx of new laws and practices oppressing them. For example, police raids. Gay bars would expect to be raided at least once every couple of weeks. The raids would include taking all customers out into the streets and demanding their identification, harassing them, and sometimes arresting them. In the center of it all, right in the middle of Greenwich Village, there was a small, dingy gay bar that was called the Stonewall Inn. Stonewall was um, owned by the Mafia, but the people felt safe. People felt that this is a place that they could go and not experience the harassment that they would in other places around New York. At 1.20 on the morning of Saturday, June 28, 1969, with 200 people patronizing the Stonewall Inn, six police officers led by Seymour Pine arrived to raid the bar with the intention of shutting it down. There were street kids and drag queens, and they just weren't having it. So they fought back. They refused to go quietly out to the street to produce their IDs. While this was happening, a group of about 150 people flocked in the streets, and once the other officers arrived, about 10 times the number of people who were to be arrested had gathered around the scene. In a frenzy, the crowd began throwing objects that quickly escalated from coins to glass bottles and beyond. The police were wildly overwhelmed. They weren't expecting this response, and so they barricaded themselves inside the bar and called for backups. 
Well, while they're inside, they trash the place. In the meantime, some rioters started slashing the tires of police cars that were poised to take bargoers down to the precinct. Her name is Miss New Orleans, and uh, she, with the help of some of her drag queen friends, pulled a parking meter out of the cement and planned to use it as a battering ram to get back in to the Stonewall. This violent revolt inspired the people of the LGBTQ community to stand up for their rights. For several nights following June 28th, people gathered in the streets of New York in protest. It was like that Rosa Parks moment. It was that galvanizing moment where they could um, exert some of their power and uh, demand change in the system. The first American Gay Pride Parade was in June of 1970, right where it all began on Christopher Street in New York City to honor the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. Since then, Pride has been celebrated in the United States in June. Inspired by these riots, several political human rights advocacy groups came about to further movements towards LGBTQ equality. Over time, these small organizations for gay rights have transformed into large advocacy groups that have brought change to the LGBTQ rights movement. Not only were these groups forming and creating change, but the others in the LGBTQ community continue to stand up for their rights as citizens and fellow human beings. As the gay rights movement evolved, it concentrated on the legalization of gay marriage in addition to overall acceptance. This strategic and cultural shift in the focus of the movement unified the activists toward a specific objective. In 1973, the work of gay rights advocacy groups and the LGBTQ community was made apparent when the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual declassified homosexuality as a curable mental disorder. This was a big step in the recognition of those in the LGBTQ community as equal members of society. There have been many milestones since that time. For example, in 1974, the first openly gay person elected to American public office, Kathy Kozachenko, was admitted to the Ann Arbor, Michigan City Council. Then, in 1982, Wisconsin became the first American state to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation. But there were many setbacks for the gay rights movement. In 1977, Harvey Milk, the first openly gay person elected to public office in California, was assassinated a year after his election by former city supervisor Dan White. To add to the public outrage, White was only sentenced to seven years in prison for voluntary manslaughter instead of the usual 25 years to life for first-degree murder. Additionally, what is known as the Don't Ask, Don't Tell law was the compromise made by the 1993 Senate regarding the ban on homosexuals in the U.S. military. This law made it illegal to ask or state one's sexual orientation while serving our country. Throughout these breakthroughs and defeats in the movement, there was certainly an increase in gay rights and equality that continues to advance through today. Marriage was, for a long time, exclusively for heterosexual couples. However, this being a declaration of love, it was a right that was wrongfully denied from the homosexual community. With years of great strides taken to obtain this right, it was finally given on Friday, June 26th of 2015 when the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 to four on the case of Obergefell v. Hodges that the right to marriage could no longer be withheld. Thrilling. You know, it's, uh, you're, you're hoping that it's coming. You're, the Pride this year was just a, a big uh, celebration of you know, all the hard work that people have done, even since uh, Stonewall. Even with this incredible achievement of the gay rights movement, the LGBTQ community still faces segregation, harassment, and dehumanization. We still have a long ways to go until everyone in the United States has equal rights and feels safe, regardless of their sexual orientation. President Obama is set to designate the Stonewall Inn in New York City the nation's first national monument to gay rights. What I hope to see from the future of the LGBTQ movement is this increase in um, just openness, that we create safe places for everyone to explore who they are. We need places for young people to explore their gender identity and their sexual orientation um, and, and who they want to be in the world. My partner called me Friday morning and I was talking to him really quick and he's like, oh my gosh, have you heard the news? And of course, I immediately went to, if Cher has died, I'm throwing myself in the river. I mean, I can't. I, I can't handle it. And he's like, no, 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 no. The Supreme Court came down and their ruling is that, you know, same-sex marriage will be legal everywhere. And I was like, oh, 
Thank God.